Um, thank you. That's, that is a great question. I think that um, before we go out and start programming, what we're going to do in the local church is that we really need to have a good, solid understanding of not only the theology of work, but have a framework or a strategy to understand how we're going to move the change and what are some of the outcomes and what does that look like. Um, for example, you know, the uh, the workplace ministry that I lead at Saddleback, um, I started this as a volunteer during many years of great pain and brokenness. Um, so having the opportunity to, that was a period of time that bridged my time from uh, being an executive in the workplace to uh, being a ministry leader. But the mission of Saddleback at Work is to equip, connect, and send workplace believers into their area of influence. So it's very, um, it's taken a number of years to kind of get some of this clarity, but it's very specific in the framework of that. The other aspect is that as we look at from a local church and as we start preparing pastors or working with other churches, is that there's a, uh, a framework, which I call, um, one of the frameworks is called RIDE, R-I-D-E, and it stands for, the R stands for role. What is the role that the workplace believer plays? So we need to help them understand, what is your job description for Jesus at work? What is it that you do? And this whole concept of, Scott, you were talking about with Bill here, what is the concept of ministry? How can my work be ministry? Um, I believe that when we are using the gifts, the talents, and the abilities that God gave us, regardless of what you do, and when we do it with our heart unto the Lord, our work in and of itself, right there, we're providing economic value, and it is worship to the Lord. If you're plumbing, for example, if you're plumbing and your attic breaks, and water is coming through your ceiling, you're probably not going to call a pastor, and if you do, they're going to say, Oh, Lord, you promised not to flood the earth, but I know you didn't promise to not flood this house. The pastor isn't going to do much for you. You're going to call a plumber. And God has gifted that plumber to minister to you in that moment in time and to care for your needs. If you are trying to get a home loan modification and no one seems to care because the people that you're running up against are you know, consumed with greed or inefficiency or they're in the wrong job or they have oppressive leadership or they've just given up, then who is answering your prayer? That single mom who's on her knees crying out to God saying, can somebody help me save my home? But if that, that person, that mortgage, that loan consultant gets up in the morning going, Lord, I'm working for you today. I'm not a paper pusher. I'm an hourly worker. Show me what you would have me do today. And I'm going to work unto you and the work that you've called me to do. That person might just be an answer to prayer to somebody else. That person indirectly, indirectly is ministering to somebody else. So the R in ride is we need to identify the role that uh, the believer plays, what, what Jesus' job description is. Uh, for them. And one of the things we have on the, the uh, vision video that I have on our workplace website is I talk about, you know, a Saddleback Church is a Great Commission church. But I like to say that before Jesus gave us the Great Commission in Matthew 28, God gave Adam and Eve the Great um, uh, Management Commission to go rule and manage the earth with God's authority. And as I talk to and work with, now we're primarily focusing on business in this context. But the Saddleback at Work ministry spans all, all industries, all job titles, both genders. It is about, doesn't matter if you're a Starbucks barista, CEO, or a truck driver, God has given each person influence in decision making and influence with other people, regardless of what their job is. So every person has an opportunity to make a decision and influence and, and have ministry. The I, very quickly, is to help them identify the role that they play. And this is where visuals, and this is where testimonies, and this is where, when you have large-scale events, this is why we do some of these, these things. What does it look like? So people can start to get a visual of it. I can get a mental model. What is it that I can model after? The D is discipleship. We need to have an intentional process or strategy to disciple them in their work life. Now, what one church does would, could very well be different from what another church does, but I found that, that these things hold true amongst churches. And the E is empower to multiply. So as we've done things, if we help them understand their job description for Jesus at work, help them see what the impact that they can have, they've been discipled specifically in their work life, then you start to see the real impact that they can have at work, and you start releasing them and commissioning them out into their area of influence. So one thing I would say is we've got to be careful that we don't just start with offering programs, but rather we need to think that it's really kind of a holistic perspective. Okay. 
Now, just a, one follow-up on that. Uh, most of our churches don't have the resources that Saddleback does to launch the kinds of initiatives that you're doing. So in the, in the absence of the resources to do that, what, what advice would you have for pastors and for those of us training pastors who will likely be in considerably smaller churches to help b- 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 uh, connect the, the, the work of the pastor with the, the work of the business person? Right, that's a, that's a, a great question. And, um, and actually, uh, being a, a new ministry, it really was not greatly uh, funded like a lot of other ministries. We have had um, big scale monthly events where we do workshops uh, business development, personal development, and spiritual development. And then we would have uh, a big session where we would have a, a speaker. We've had even Dr. John Townsend come and speak. I do a time of devotional teaching. We have connection at the table. We pray for people. We give a new book, set the, you know, the summary of the books of the Bible to every brand new person. We put those events on. Up to a couple hundred people come to this every month, business working professionals, uh, people in the workplace, all different jobs and titles. We do that for $100 a month. Uh, 200 people, we put on a class act. We minister to them, we train them, we disciple them, we pray for them. So you can do these things without money. And I will also say is that I have a huge volunteer team. So uh, I have, uh, you, you'll be surprised at how many people in your congregation have this inside of them and are just waiting to plug in and express themselves. So getting your volunteers involved and building that leadership team would be very significant. Um, but uh, just start meeting them where they're at and just be very careful in terms of that it's not programmatic and it's not only on one specific job or title or level. 